I'm very, very pleased to introduce our next two speakers. We've all had a chance to get to know them, I think, throughout the last few days. They've been very active participants, and I think we've all been looking forward to this uh, as a result. Let me say a few words of background about both of the dancers and cultural diplomats uh, before they begin. Uh, Lauren Albert began her work in international development after traveling to Tanzania in 2009, where she was introduced to a family-run orphanage. This is where the smile of one child changed her life forever. Since 2009, Lauren has been fundraising and event planning for the H Huruma Orphanage and will be traveling to Tanzania next week to pursue her next project. After her visit in 2009, Lauren collaborated with the Beau Soleil's Foundation or Fondation Le Solstice, a Swiss humanitarian organization. Together they have taken a grassroots approach in order to achieve sustainability and have sponsored the children of Huruma to attend an English medium private school beginning in 2010. After graduating from McGill University uh, with two field exchanges in East Africa and a year abroad in Israel studying international development, Lauren grew to learn that education is a first step towards sustainability. Lauren became emotionally invested with her work in both East Africa and Israel, which led her to pursue a master's degree in crisis and trauma studies at Tel Aviv University. It is here that Laura met Professor Mike Nat uh, Naftali, founder of Brit Olam, who inspired her to take her work to the next level. I would also like to say a few words about Danielle Natalie Kind, dancer, performer, and educator of hopefully a lifelong learner. Due to the demand to stop dancing and volunteer for the army, Danielle established in 2003 the Anat Seed, Art is Education, an ongoing volunteer project of one year that allows artists of all disciplines to live together, create, and learn how to use the arts as a communication tool in a community before they are recruited to the army. The project grew to become a network of artists who understood the power of art and its important role in shaping society. Today she leads the development team of their communication channel, Talking Art. In 2004, Danielle joined the army and served near Ramallah. There she has established the studio, which allowed soldiers to learn and teach their art and continue to create, live, and express the things they have to deal with. Since 2006, she teaches and dances in various settings around the country. In the last two years, she has been creating choreographies and dances, also in spaces other than the traditional stage, in galleries and outdoors, interacting and encountering people. Since last summer, Danielle has been a member of the tense protest movement of the Israeli society, particularly within the education department. There she acts to spread the word that something needs to be changed in our consciousness and that the arts has a lot of the answer within them strongly believing that peace in the Middle East is possible throughout that perspective. Inspiration, arts for humanity. Please join me in a very, very warm welcome for Lauren Albert and Danielle Natalie Kind. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm really, really inspired to stand here today. I would like us to, just for one second, to go over to this morning go back to this morning and just remember a few things that we shared just today. This morning, uh, Dr. Chang Fung Gu, if, that's, I'm, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, talked with us about a disease. A disease as a need to create something. For him, it was learning Tai Chi. In Hebrew, disease and war share the exact same letters. I feel that in order to I don't know, stop the disease. <laughs> um, I also share the same thoughts. The second thing that we had today, it's that we sang together with Amitai. We just all sang together. Maybe one solution, one step in order to stop the disease. After that, Aaron came on and said, please, this is a great music. Please turn on the volume a bit more. Well, couldn't agree more. After that, my neighbor, Mr. Amir, came up and said ambitiously, let's all try to be us, but still to cooperate. I would appreciate everything if our countries would do that. After that, last but very not least, Mr. Kirsch went on the stage and said and asked who are in this room as to mention the opportunity that we have here today. 
this is the exact place that we wanted to start is with part of you, but all of you deserve to have this orange stickers that we are like rudely put on you in a different spaces in time with the past few days. We feel, we were feeling that you <laughs> we feel that we, together, has succeeded to create a community in the past few days due to the amazing gift that the IECD gave us just to be here together. And I feel that this thing that goes on here, it's really Zeitgeist. Well, we are in Germany. Zeitgeist is the spirit of this time also know about cultural, spiritual, political, climate, state of mind that come to define a certain time in history. I think we are the people that our size guys is defining this period of time in history and this is very inspiring. From that no on, note on, we want to present you, I'll, yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs> so it works. Uh, from that point on, we want to present you today our ambitious project. And we want to ask you not to talk about our past and our organization's past, and not to talk about the present, because as we heard, there's an enormous amount of wonderful projects, but to speak about a dream that we all can make come true together. This dream starts with a small world, word, peace. We think that art, as you, can do that. And in order to do that, we're gonna start by, yeah, okay. We're gonna start by looking at our world that we're living in. Okay, but now we need to go. The slides that we passed. This was you inspiring. <laughs> So this is inspiration, Arts for Humanity. In a few minutes, hopefully, you won't understand anything, but you want to be a part of it. <laughs> this is our world, our amazing global world, world that we can be together in through social media. Like Tula, that I cannot even pronounce her name, but I can share a daily basis connection with her because I have Facebook and Skype. It's amazing what our world had become. But you say one world. I just don't think it's really that simple. We don't have one world. We have the Western world, and we have the developing world. All of you here today are aware of this disparity, and there is an obvious gap that we need to fill in order to, make, in order to all become one. We represent one world, but who makes up the other? The developing world is made up of millions of children who, like all of us, hold a unique gift, talent, or strength that defines their character. But for most, this strength is locked inside, preventing each child from exploring that gift due to a lack of resources, confidence, education, acceptance, and social support. Do you know what it feels like to be trapped inside yourself? To know and understand your strength with no means to utilize it? Makundi, what would you be without your video camera? Mark, would you have discovered your dream your passion and what defines who you are as a cultural diplomat if you had never pursued your degree at Columbia University? Danielle, without music, without ballet slippers, and without dance, who would you be? I'm not quite sure that I know, but I do know, well, I want to believe that the most important things that I got in life is not the ballet slippers itself, but it's the someone believing in me and just the space, the stage to be who I am and to move as I want, and the love that I got. I feel you. I too am one of the lucky ones. I have, I have the resources to travel here today and learn from all of you. I have the resources to travel across the world as a volunteer. But the tools that I bring with me are intangible. I bring touch, I bring love, I bring compassion, and I bring empathy. These intangible tools are enough. Dr. Mike Naftali, professor and founder of Alam and Brito Lem in Israel, discovered this through his 30 years of work as an educator, global leader, and volunteer. 
As volunteers, Mike Naftali and I share this understanding. When I travel to the developing world, not only do my personal tools change a community's life, they change mine. We build relationships between two cultures and we learn from one another. We bring two worlds together. Mike and I promote the idea of cross-cultural solutions through volunteerism. Breach Alum Organization works in, on an entirely voluntary basis to advance a wide range of community outreach programs. All of these use the arts as a vehicle in promoting vulnerable populations, including, orphanage, including orphanages, non-formal schools, rehabilitation centers for HIV populations, correlational institutions, women's empowerment groups, and much more. I think with that understanding, we can now go back to our global world, but I guess it will never look the same again. With the understanding that all you need is the look, the touch, doing something together, singing together. With this understanding, communication becomes education, and both of them are becoming the basics of art. The power of art, as mentioned too many times um, in this conference, is unanimous. I'm just going to say one thing, adding to this amazing colleagues who talked about that so much. Art gives us the chance to look at our own world on this moment from a different perspective. Inspiration is a platform that will bring our two worlds together through three guiding principles. The three guiding principles behind inspiration are parallel to the Arts for Cultural Diplomacy program, all pertaining to the relationship between art and our global community. First and foremost, the universality of art. Art is a form of expression. It allows us to be creative. It allows us to communicate. It is a universal language, like we've all shared many times here. As the ICD puts it, it is the mediator of the inexpressible. Secondly, the power of art. Art is a tool to promote dialogue between different cultures and professional realms. Art has the power to raise awareness about social and global issues while empowering individuals through expression. The shared, ICD defines this as the shared experience of creating and experiencing art as one, as one that can establish sincere human relationships, relationships that cannot be broken by the words or actions of others. And thirdly, the transformative nature of art. All of us standing here today exemplify and embody the transformative nature of art. Art simply brings people, people together. Together, we represent the international art world and share a universal language. Art has the power to transform our world, moving from disparity to unity, while breaking barriers, influencing positive behaviors, and promoting an accepted outlet for emotional expression. The Arts for Cultural Diplomacy program defines the transformation, this transformation as the creation of a shared space where our global community can express their emotions freely. Now we can start to give you an example of what we're talking about. So inspiration is going to be divided to three main projects for you today. The first of all, and most important as a base, is the platform. Arts for Humanity platform aims to be a place, not a real place, like we talk, not an, inst an institute, but a place for all of the projects that we heard today, we heard this week, like the ICD. But with the want to do, to practice it together, not just sharing our practices. Hopefully in a few days we'll, come, we'll be cooperating, so that will work out too. Just to give you an example, most of you got in the past few days this notebook. This plain notebook, the Israeli notebook, is the first project that uh, Guy Morag, which is Israeli curator, just jumped into the platform and suggested. I'm gonna read a few of his words about the project so you get the understanding. The plain notebook has been used for decades by children and adults all over the country of Israel. It is also the cheapest. These days, when the market is flooded with colorful, beautiful notebooks with 3D prints of Hello Kitty and the Transformers, the Play Notebook was cast aside as a washed out starlet. This project tries to capture the magic of simpler, less commercial era, 
celebrate the uh, countless unique artistic perspectives and show that you can create an interesting work of art from the plenteous and cheapest of materials. It aims to bring people closer to and through art. We have already 350 works of art from just this thing, from all around the world. You are more than invited to join this. It's just one step in the way to make a network that can sustain something with billions of dollars or just like billions of works of art without any money. Something like that. Anyways, downstairs, you have this waiting. If your country is still not in it, you should take one or five and bring it <laughs> to artists and send it back to us. Just for examples, this is from here, from Berlin. And this is Sarah Maple from UK. And this is from Turkey. And this is from Thailand. Just for you to have like a quick look. The second project is Inspiration, the International Arts Academy for Youth. When talking about an academy, we are talking about a place, like you said about the juniors, that can... What? Word? Promote. Promote. <laughs> promote can work. Can promote the, the teenagers in order to them to become the new generation of cultural diplomats, because they're going to live in the world of peace. Not, we're just going to try to help them build it. it. What? Yes. Develop and train, not okay. Yes. Thank yes. you. <laughs> it's a good thing that I brought my Israeli friend. <laughs> um, so, talking about this Inspiration Academy, we're talking about a place, now it's a real place, that uh, youth from all around the world will come. And just imagine fields of grass in the north of Israel. One in one... Um, in one corner, kids are like practicing their African dance. In the other corners, they're just practicing Shakespeare. In a, in a third point, they're working about a, I don't know a, a paper that they have to to to, um, to put up. In a in a different point, they're just making food together for lunch because they live there because they're from all over the place. And maybe they're even I don't know practicing for the Delphi Games or um, to the uh, festival in uh, the kids festival in Greece. Where is she? In uh, Turkey. I lost her. Never mind. <laughs> or um, uh, wherever, we, whichever project that we may have. It's amazing just to imagine a place that youth from all around the world are going to sit together and learn art like we do. It's, I don't know, I find it amazing. Danielle, she might seem like a dreamer, but I have proof that we are going to make her dream come true. So now you're waiting for the proof, for confirmation that we are not completely out of our minds. Welcome to Muse Uganda. Muse is an innovative arts program for advancing orf AIDS orphans, abandoned refugee children, and disadvantaged youth in Uganda, while promoting the arts as a therapeutic tool for vulnerable populations. Because the children enrolled had no prior education, we wanted to provide them with a unique learning tool that they could use to live a sustainable life. We recognize the individual potential of, neglect of neglected and impoverished youth who hold a passion for the arts. Through arts and design and social work, Muse facilitates training, counseling, and community empowerment to vulnerable Ugandan youth and children between the ages of 14 and 18. We have collaborated with a very grassroots initiative called NIAD by Dr. Kizito, an artist and educator. When Dr. Kizito began the academy, Dr. Naftali asked NIAD if they wanted to take part in an outreach community program. Dr. Kizito was inspired by Naftali's compassion and decided to join our initiative. Dr. Kizito is now emotionally invested in the project and has taken personal responsibility to help develop Muse. Muse was established over three years ago and has already had, had their first graduating class move on to NIAD, Kizito's Academy. So, you've seen and heard, heard it with your own eyes. Muse Uganda is our successful model of what Inspiration Academy will soon become. Okay, so it can happen, it is happening. Who's with us? <laughs> I think everyone, yeah. <laughs> um, it, now we can 
take one step further into the practice mode, practical mode. So we're talking about Roshpina, Israel, in the Upper Galilee. We're talking about the Lower Galilee, um, which is gonna the place is gonna be there. The academy is already. We have a place that's gonna host the academy for the uh, first few years. We want to open this academy on September 2011 and uh, 14, which is gonna be like tomorrow, and because of all of that work we have to do. And next year, we're planning to do a summer camp on July uh, 2013. This is where it's going to happen now, how, how it's going to look. Talking about the students. So we want to know who's going to make up the student body. Um, the children will be between the age of 16 and 20, so mostly high school students. Everyone will hold a passion for the arts or a very strong artistic ability but they won't have the ability to utilize their talent in their home, home countries. <coughs> They're gonna study. Well, you talked about that rangely, so liberal arts, visual arts, also known as fine arts in a certain circles, we can discuss that in a different time. Performance arts, theater, which is theater and dance, and circus, music, media, and we're gonna put a lot of time and effort about traditional arts, also, and a lot of sharing, just teaching one another our own traditions. Faculty and staff will be comprised of international artists, teachers and professors, guest lecturers from Israel and abroad, resident staff, art therapists, volunteers, social workers, and therapists, all of whom will, pro will promote dialogue through cultural diplomacy. Academia, there'll be possibilities for research and practice for undergraduate and graduate students and training courses in international development. Artist residency. As we all know, it's very important that we'll have artists in an arts academy. So um, the academia will be a place for artists from all over to come and just create together, as simple as that. Not money, but a good exchange for it. They're gonna be a part of the school, so they can probably they will want to volunteer there. Anyways, we're gonna have a very very uh, large volunteerism uh, network, also by the students themselves. The students themselves, th themselves, we're gonna do community work, bringing inspiration to the people. This is the point to talk about the fact that this is in Israel. Israel is not like. Switzerland with the melancholy and tango or whatever that we discussed. Is that Switzerland? No, no. not Switzerland. Um, Netherlands? Yes, Finland. Finland, Finland. 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 yeah. Finland. Well, a, a place that like everyone <laughs> agrees that it's fine. <laughs> Israel is not like that. We don't have melancholy and tango. And, um, but we do have melancholy and tango. Uh, <laughs> anyways, the north of Israel, as mentioned already before, has very large diversity in it. And this community service through art, we can really make a change through it. We have Arabs and Jewish, we have Orthodox and secular. We have people with very, very different views in the north of Israel and they feel that they're not connected, although they share the same groceries. Uh, artists, therapists, young leaders and other professionals will also come to volunteer, will be invited to come to volunteer in the International Academy and the North of Israel. Fair trade and business development. We're gonna have a concert hall, we're gonna have an international art gallery, we're gonna have a visitor center, we're gonna have a fair trade store, and my favorite, an international culinary school where I guess someone represent, will represent their country from all over the world and make their own cultural food and everyone from all over the world will get to experience that. And that's how we're gonna fund this thing. Yes. <laughs> Part of how we're gonna fund it. Yeah. <laughs> Alumni, graduates, will go back to their home countries as leading artists. Part of them will establish a music school in their own country. If we do that, we'll have network of schools understanding the power of art as a tool of communication and education. And we also can do delegation, international uh, studies, whatever. They're all gonna be partner partners of IIAH, hopefully, as we all, which is the Inspiration International Art 
Uh, it's mean. for humanity. Yeah, I'm not good with this letters thing. And they're also going to be a members of an international alumni network, which we know that really gives, can give you strength and abilities that even if you don't have, I don't know, money, you do have people that you know in different places That's that can invite yeah. you, that support you, and various stuff like that. Okay, so let's go to work. <laughs> Development team. Um, right now, it consists of six international desks, and we need each and every one of you to become a member of one of those desks. We have a list, like it, who is going to be where. All right. Yeah, but if it speaks to you, we want you. So if we're talking, but never mind the desk, like social educational, public leadership, volunteerism, academic, arts, or diplomatic, the most important thing about the, this development team is that you will be international. We can have a development team of like, I don't know, just like people from Israel and Europe, but I don't think, I think it will miss the whole purpose. We need to start to think together in order to change something. We're doing it here. We want to continue doing that by asking ourselves how we build something so big without losing our values, without uh, stop questioning. We have to do it together. So that's the time to understand that if you're, if you're sitting here, you're ambassadors of your country for us. We soon going to help ask for you for your connections. And we have almost every continent here, and we need every continent to be a part of this project. Yeah, that we, we need every. Yes. Every one. I said. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, social return on investment. Well, it's like w preaching to the choir. You all understand. <laughs> I'm not going to elaborate on that. Economic, social, artistic, political, humanitarian, whatever. Everyone can feel here in this room that it's worth it. No? No, I have to add something. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, uh, Jewish culture, yeah. We're going to get to it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you want to say something? Yeah. No, I want to say that you have to explain because yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. are Jewish. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Uh, well, we are more than happy that not everyone are Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously <laughs> happy. <laughs> um, so Jewish culture. Yeah, Jewish culture. Talking about the gift that Jewish culture has to bring, we're discussing Tikkun Olam which translates literally to world repair. And to me, to be Jewish means to repair the world. That's how identifi I identify with Judaism. That's it. So, yes, that's it. That is it. It's but nothing more, not noses, is not like... Israel and Judaism has to bring to our world. And it's something that I think every religion and every culture shares. It's important to give back. Yeah, with that, with that thought, we can also make a change between the religions because I think we all share the same uh, values of humanity um, and stuff like that. Okay, partners. So here are some of our partners, but hopefully by the end of today, a lot of you will be up here. You have a beautiful logo. <laughs> It'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will. Okay, let's change the picture and talk about, I want you, I want you so bad. Uh, we need, we need from every place in the world. So who do we need? Government agencies, associations, corporations, NGOs, artists, cultural diplomats, artists, professors and educators, artists, social workers, social entrepreneurs, dreamers like us, and funding. Funding. Yes. Let's talk about money. Uh, talking about money because we want to put things down on the table. We're talking about three projects, as we said. Muse Uganda uh, is looking for... $40,000 for their annual budget. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. We yes. just need someone <laughs> with $40,000 for their annual budget. Um, like, now. Uh, Out for Humanity platform. Because we want to make everyone's dreams come true, if you have this movie that you're doing, if you have this festival that you're making, we want to build a platform that um, investors, um, investors, donor, donors, donors, investors, donors, investors, artists, anyone, can just bring their um, their money and their resources to a place that they know the artists there are in a humanitarian state of mind, and that way everyone here can just like. 
If you're passionate about a project, you're passionate Just about it, making yeah. something happen, this is the platform. So it's like easier to, we feel that it's easier to try to, to really unify and start doing things, to, things together and then even uh, go to this um, large and beautiful dreams. And the last but very not least, the Inspiration Academy, it got cut off, I have no idea why. Um, Inspiration Academy, we're talking about... $200 million. <laughs> Peanuts? Small amount of money. <laughs> But we can do it also, we need money, but we also need diplomatic connections. And more important, uh, it can be things that are not money, like, I don't know, an airline that will want to take fly this, a, a fly student everyone. from all over the world to become it a can part be of money this. Sub, 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 substances. Yeah? That's English? Uh, <laughs> substitute. Substitute. <laughs> Substitution. Hebrew, Hebrew. <laughs> yes. um, but anyone with resources that wants to become a part of this network and become a part of this dream and help make it happen. In short. So this is what we're talking about. Um, generally, we have left you, uh, if, you if you didn't get it for us yet, um, downstairs. Uh, all the details and our contacts and the Plain notebooks notebook. and we really want to contact every country that is here um, please if you want to be a part of it talk to us or just say talk to us so, and we'll talk to you uh, don't call us we'll call you stuff like that um, and we want to finish with a quote before the questions and answers that we found how surprising, inspiring. <laughs> Art inspires, produces an unwillingness to settle for what we have and a desire for something better. It is the product and producer of creative activity, change. It is essential for continuous development. Thank you very much. And also, that, that piece of artwork is done by Dr. Kazito in Uganda. It's a little bit blurry, but. And one last thing, for any of you who would like to come, you are all welcome to come to Israel for our launching event in June. And a lot of this work will be on display and the artwork from the children in Museum Uganda will also be sold and on display. You can stay at my place. Me too. <laughs>